Hi everyone, welcome to Payments Live and Happy New Year 2013. Happy New Year's. Yes, this is our first show this year and we'll have a lightweight office hour uh, style session. Uh, we'll answer questions from uh, Stack Overflow, the groups and the moderator. Yeah. So first let's start with a few announcements. Uh, we just launched a new digital subscription course on uh, Google Developers Academy. You can find it if you go to developers.google.com slash academy or from our main Google Commerce pa landing page if you follow the training link. You can find that at developers.google.com slash commerce. And a second announcement, uh, for those of you who follow the Google Commerce block, you're probably already aware of it, but for those tuning in, uh, we recently announced Zavers, which is a digital coupon solution for loyalty cards, and you can find out more about it at zavers.com. Cool, more so, savings. Yeah, <laughs> everybody loves savings. All right, let's go to the questions. Let's see what we have here. Oh. I guess I'll start. You want to take the first one? Yeah. So the new version of Google Wallet has been looming for months. Where is it and what changes will it bring? Uh, I know we've been saying that you know we can't wait for it to launch and that it's going to be awesome. Um, unfortunately, it has been, I mean, it's been delayed for a little bit mm -hmm. and then we can't really tell you when the start or when it will launch. All we can say is that it's coming. Um, so in the future, I mean, before it launches, we'll definitely give you, or when it launches, we'll definitely give you a heads up, and we'll tell you about the APIs that it brings and the benefits that can bring both merchants and consumers. Mm -hmm. But for now, uh, it's just going to be a little bit of a wait. Yeah, we have quite a few exciting APIs, so it's yep. it's worth the wait. Yep. All right. Uh, oh, so next question is about Zaver. We were just talking about it. The question is: Is Zaver's integrated with Google Wallet somehow? Uh, and it's not exposed to users yet? If not, when will the users see it? Will the integration be different for retailers versus manufacturers? So as a consumer, as a user, you can already use Zavers. Uh, if you go to zavers.com, you can sign up on the online site and you will see a list of available retailers where you can uh, redeem the coupons. On the mobile side, if you have a you know, smartphone or a Google, uh, wallet app you can navigate there it's a mobile web app and you can use it in the store the same way as you you'd use the online site very uh, cool to redeem the coupon so the coupon would be saved to your app and then when you swipe your loyalty card it will be automatically redeemed cool uh i guess i'll take the next one so can i add cards from authorized users that are not main cards on the account uh, and I'm taking this as in that if you are, so there's a, a few different ways to take it. Uh, one of them is as a consumer and the other one is as a merchant. Well, I guess there's two different ways to take it. As a merchant, um, if you want to charge something on your customer's behalf, that currently isn't allowed by the checkout terms of service. So the example here is that if one of your customers calls in and says, I'd like to place an order, you can't, and, and passes you the credit card information, you can't then enter their credit card information into the account to complete that transaction and use Google Checkout as your method of payment or as your payment gateway. From the consumer side, let's say that you're buying something for your mom and then she buys you or and she hands you her credit card number. Um, because you're buying on something on her behalf and she has your permission and you're a consumer, uh, you can enter in her credit card number into your account and then purchase that way. But that's only if she gives you permission, of course. Right, right. And you would need all the information anyway, like yeah. billing address. Exactly. Code. You would have to have all the information that she so wants. Only only the owner should have access to all that information. Exactly. Ideally, only the owner should be the person that's uh, entering the credit card information. But sometimes it's understandable that you have to make purchases on other people's behalf. Uh, and I think in those cases, as long as you have permission to, as a consumer, that's OK. Yep. All right, I'll take the next one. This is a Google checkout question. The question is when I'm trying to add a checkout buy now button to my web page, the button appears as expected, but nothing happens when I press it. So um, I've seen quite a few cases like this. The Google checkout button is easily insertable in any HTML web page. It is a form uh, HTML element, 
and you just ha have to copy paste uh, the snippet we generate for you in our page. The reason that nothing happens, even though you see the button, suggests that something is wrong with uh, the form. Uh, something is missing in the form, it's not posting to the correct website, uh, or the form is completely uh, gone. So the first thing I would do is to run an HTML validator and uh, make sure that the form looks as expected. Uh, you can also have a look at the site inside the debugger, use uh, one of the Chrome debugging web tools or Firebug in Firefox, and make sure that the form appears the same as it was when you copy pasted it. The reason is that if you inserted it in the wrong place in the HTML, you break the, let's say you were breaking the nesting structure of uh, HTML, then the browsers may get confused and they would not uh, close the form correctly or remove the form tag altogether. And yep. so the form is gone. Uh, one example I've seen is someone inserting the form element inside a span uh, tag. So that will break it because span is an inline element, form it's a block element, and you cannot have block elements inside inline elements. And you know some different browsers will react differently to this type of situation. Um, any other? Yeah, questions? I mean, I've also seen uh, within certain website HTML editors, so like some sites, they have their own HTML editors mm, yeah. built in as like web HTML editors instead of like, you know, TextMate or TextPad or whatever. Uh, and then within those, I've seen that sometimes when you click Save, it actually strips the elements that it doesn't want to allow, right? So for example, if you paste a form into Blogger, I believe that Blogger will strip out the form tags. Uh, if you place paste an element, paste a form element into uh, was it Google Sites? I believe Google Sites also strips out the form tags. Yeah. So sometimes HTML editors can do this too. Uh, and then if you like, if you save it and you go back there and you're like, hey, where did the form tabs go? That's a good indication that something's happening there. The workarounds for those two specific sites are using something called gadgets. So um, I believe within both Blogger and on Google Sites, you can add in gadgets to uh, handle the form post for you, to handle the buy now button action for you. Mm -hmm. And the difference between uh, gadgets and regular, form po regular forms is that gadgets are always iframed, right? So then the security is a little bit different. All right. So you gonna go on? Ah, I take the next one. Yeah, take the next one. Okay. Um, will Google Wallet be integrated with Google Shopper and Google Offers, etc.? Now this one I can take from a bunch of different ways. <laughs> Pretty open-ended. Um, so let's start with Google Wallet and Google Offers. I mean, I think Google Wallet, to buy a Google Offer, you already have to use Google Wallet to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the future, I think the question here is talking about can you redeem wallet, or can you redeem offers with a single tap of wallet? And then in this case, I believe, I mean, if, if you look at the previous history of what we've done with loyalty cards about passing all the information at once with a single tap, or with a single uh, with single purchase confirmation, I think that's the direction that we're going to be headed in, um, of enabling sim and simplifying transactions where you pass a lot of information at once, and then you don't need to pass anything additional beyond that. In terms of Google Shopper and Google Wallet, uh, I think the question here is, will you be able to purchase items from Google Shopper using Google Wallet? And for that one, I don't really know. I mean, that's something that's. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to probably do some more research on it. If there's some sort of um, market benefit, if there's some sort of benefit to merchants and consumers uh, about about for enabling purchases in Google Shopper, then we'll do it. But other than that, I mean, I'm not quite sure there. Yeah, come back and ask the question in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you will know more. All right, let me take the next one. Uh, the question is: Will Google Wallet be able to be used with tablets? So I, I assume you are referring to NFC tablets, um, and if the NFC tablet, if the tablet has an NFC chip, then obviously you can use Google Wallet. Uh, for as an example, the um, Nexus Seven has an NFC chip, and the Galaxy Nexus Ten has two NFC chips. So definitely, you can uh, use Wallet uh, with those tablets, and keep in mind to use Google Wallet. Uh, tap and pay, 
you do not need a carrier or a wireless connection. So you just turn on wallet and uh, you can uh, make the transaction. Yep. All right. Uh, I guess I'll take the next one. Will there be a scan slash picture entering manual system for non-major credit card slash reward cards? Um, that's a good question. So there's there's a lot of cards, and I think OCR of like credit cards and other things enter in those credentials. It's something that'd be really useful for consumers, right? It simplifies that flow. It drastically simplifies that flow because you take a picture of the card and all your details are in. Um, for non-major credit cards and rewards cards, I think that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge because it won't be as automatic as having the standard that everybody uses, right? This will be kind of, we would have to create some sort of OCR templates for each specific card type and then uh, be, able to, be able to recognize and scan through that. I, I'm not sure if it'll be done. I want to say that we would probably want to work with all the partners to do this. Maybe the partner creates a template and then just adds it into our system and then we can just automatically scan their card or something like that. Uh, so I want, to, I want to say that, yes, I think it's useful, but I don't know if it'll actually get built yeah. out. Who knows what the future will be. Yeah, Maybe we'll have some um, QR codes that encapsulate all this information and then they will be Yeah, some sort of universal. Use. Yeah. But I think for today's world, um, it is probably useful to have a scanning app that mm -hmm. scans your driver license or your library card, stuff like that. Yeah. And you have them handy. Uh, I know in California, you can now present your insurance information on the phone. On the phone? Yeah. <laughs> you have it uh, in digital form. Just imagine the IDs exactly. on the phone. Yeah, IDs right. on the phone. Everything would be cool. So it's not a Google Wallet specific question, but. You know, it's it's useful in general to have this kind of um, app on the on a smartphone. Yeah. Alrighty, so I'll take the next question. This one it's about the digital goods API. Question is: I implemented the in-app payments API in the sandbox using App Engine on the server side. I can complete a transaction without the postback URL, but when I add the postback URL, I don't get the callback and the transaction fails. So the great news is that it works with all the postback URL. You are 90% done. You have very little work left to do. You, ca you created the JWT, the transaction completes correctly, Google does not reject uh, your payment uh, information, and you already done some server work to generate the JWT. You know how to parse it, encode it, decode it. So it looks like on the programming side, you know what needs to be done. Now the problem is why aren't you getting back the callback? So the first thing to check is on the client side handler, check the error code return. And I believe it should be postback error. That's what uh, you're getting. Well, try to send you the post back, it just did not receive back the confirmation. So somewhere along the way, something broke. Uh, check that you're not behind a, a login wall. In a lot of cases, Google App Engine, when you create an account, it has restriction who can post to your site. So sometimes you're behind the login wall and then the callback gets lost. So check your logs, see what's uh, happening there. Uh, One easy way to test is to actually curl uh, curl post or curl content mm -hmm. to your post back handler yeah. or to your web service handler. Yeah. Right. So that way you can just do something on terminal. You type in curl mm -hmm. uh, the data you want to send over in the URL, and it'll just post it. Right. So simulate what Google is doing. Yeah. Exactly. In a, in a way, and make sure you can handle that case. And then of course there is the 10 second delay issue. Even that though that's a pretty long delay. Who knows what may happen on your server side make sure if you get a call back, you respond uh, within 10 seconds, and then uh, the order will go through. Then you receive the correct uh, confirmation on the client side, and then uh, the transaction is complete. So if you still can't figure it out, then post a question on Stack Overflow in the groups, yep. and someone from <laughs> our team or the community will jump in and help. All right? Cool, I'll take the next one. Uh, can I charge credit cards via server side only? to Google Wallet, e.g. a HTTP post. I don't want to use any client-side code to provide my own web page, and that does all the charging. 
Um, so this, it seems to me that you're looking for more of a payment gateway functionality where you can just pass over credit card information and then charge that amount and capture the, the proceeds of the sale. Uh, currently, Google, Check, uh, Google Wallet doesn't offer any solutions like this. Um, in this case, the purchases always need to complete on uh, Google Wallet slash Google Checkout. However, we do offer a new flow. Um, it's called Google Wallet for Online Commerce. And then the difference is that it's kind of like a OAuth 2 style access to Google uh, payment credentials. So what we'll do is we'll actually pass you over, you as a merchant, the, a one-time use card that you can charge against your payment gateway. So that's something that's a little bit different and maybe more useful to you. Um, for just the payment gateway aspect of it, you may be more interested in a solution such as authorize.net mm -hmm. or chase payment tech that can perform this sort of uh, API charge request. Where can people find out more about the online commerce API? Uh, you can find out more about the online commerce API at developers.google.com slash wall uh, slash commerce slash wallet slash online. Okay. All right, one more question. I'll take it. The question is, I have trouble posting a digital subscription order. I get a purchase canceled failure code. How do I debug this? So purchase canceled indicates that either the buyer canceled the transaction or something went wrong with uh, the order. Either the payment failed or there was some timeout, some expiration, and the order is not valid anymore. So I would first have a look at the JWT. Y you are correctly constructing the J JWT. Google is not rejecting it, but check the issued and expiration times. Those may not be valid anymore, and then Google thinks that uh, the order is, has expired and it simply returns the error code. Second, check your uh, buyer account, the sandbox buyer account you're using for this purchase. Make sure the credit cards look correctly. Uh, they are the test credit cards that uh, we're offering. And generally that there's nothing wrong with the buyer account. Try different credit cards. Uh, we have at least four that you can try with and see if that fixes the problem. If none of these works, then I would go and try one of our samples on the developer sample, si sample code site and uh, then walk backwards. Do changes to that sample one by one to match your changes and see if it breaks. Um, and you know, uh, that, that should take, fix it. If it doesn't, again, the, the <laughs> groups and Stack Overflow are a great yeah. resource. Stack Overflow is a great yeah. resource. All right, I think I that was it for uh, this, yeah. this session. So happy new year again, and we'll see you soon in a couple of weeks. Yep, Bye. see you in a few weeks.